And it's good being with you all again. Uh, thanks for having me here once again. Uh, I feel like I've been here so much this summer, and um, you would think I would know everybody's names by now, but uh, don't test me. I do know Lester, um, but uh, uh, make sure you inter- make sure you tell me what your name is. Don't don't just assume I know it. Unfortunately, um, someday I'll get it. Have my kids with me. This is Brandon. He's been here before. He's he's on staff with our ministry at uh, the Revolution as well. Um, This morning, I want to share with you a bunch of stories. And um, these are stories of things that I've recently experienced, and hopefully through those you'll be inspired. Um, I've been telling a lot of these stories, and so I had to go back through all of my notes to see if I've told any of these stories here. And uh, so I'm trying to avoid retelling any of them, uh, but if I have, you'll, you'll have to forgive me. Now, my kids... Uh, they're like, you're giving this message again because I gave it at our church a couple weeks ago, and then I spoke over at Common Way, and I gave a message similar to that, and then uh, um, I was at a leadership training thing up in Michigan and talked about some of these things, and then here I am, and they've had to sit through all these, and uh, they were like, Dad, come on, this is, this is too hard for us to have to endure this, but hopefully for you, God, hopefully God will uh, speak something. To us here today. A couple of months ago, our campus church celebrated uh, 30 years of being on campus, which was uh, felt like a big accomplishment for us. And uh, we had alumni from all over the United States that came back for a weekend. And um, we spent the weekend remembering. We were remembering uh, each other. I mean, some of us hadn't seen each other for so long. And uh, when we had this banquet on Saturday night, and as people were lining up, I was just looking at people and just going down the line, hugging person after person. I mean, some of these people I haven't seen for 25 years. And uh, we're kind of being reunited together. And, and uh, it was a really amazing experience. Um, I've had the opportunity during the 30 years that the church has been on campus, I've been there for 28 of those years. So I knew absolutely everyone that showed up to this weekend, and there were lots of really powerful moments. I remember one time we were, uh, we were all sitting down and we were worshiping, and, and, um, and then a couple of people started to stand up, and I looked up, and the the guy who led me to Christ stood up and was, was praising God on the other side of the room. Then uh, my first pastor stood up and, and he was there. And all these people that I have this amazing history and experience with. And we were, we were all there. Because most often in our ministry, we're, we're there together for a temporary period of time. And then sometimes we don't see each other even ever again. And it was a really amazing experience. I remember spending time in the dorms with some of the people who were there. Um, I remember when some of them gave their lives to Christ on campus. I remember praying with some of these people. I remember praying for specific things, asking God to do something in our lives. I remember ways that we experienced God when we were together. And uh, that weekend was I'm going to say it's probably one of the highlights of my entire time of being in ministry. Um, one of my friends who was there, his name's Billy, um, about 10 years ago, uh, there was a group of us who, who or a couple of guys who were, who were going to slaughter some pigs because we were going to have a hog roast on campus. And um, so none of us really knew that much of what we were doing, uh, but Billy has a farm just outside of town, and uh, so we went out there and and I remember right before we uh, shot these hogs, um, they were in the back of this pickup truck, and, and he, said, um, he said, I think we should pray. And he, like, put his hands on the <laughs> hogs while we were sitting there, and he prayed the most sincere prayer. And at first, we were all kind of snickering, and, but he prayed the prayer that these hogs would fulfill the purpose that God created them for, not to just feed uh, bodies, but to save souls. And uh, I got to tell Billy that night what happened as a result of that hog roast. 
Uh, there were so many people that showed up that we decided to never do it again on campus because we couldn't, we couldn't provide enough food for everyone uh, that came, which was a good thing. But through that, we met tons of people and connected with a lot of people on campus. One guy was standing near the bus stop and um, um, I saw him kind of looking over a couple times and, and um, I think he was maybe wanting to come over. I don't know, but I went over and talked with him and, and uh, then it seemed like he was just wanting to get away from me. Um, and his name was Will and he was from China. And um, yeah, he was trying to be polite, uh, I think, but um, I invited him to come over and sit with us and, and have some food. And so we had this tent and he came and sat down. And while we were sitting there, he told me that right before he had come to America, his grandmother had passed away. And right before she passed away, she gave him this Bible. And she told him that she wanted him to read it. And um, the Bible had been given to her by these ladies that were coming over to her house and caring for her right before she died. And uh, Will said, I've been trying to read the Bible, but I, I can't really understand it. And, uh, and I said, well, maybe, you know, I've read the Bible a lot. Maybe we could sit down and, and talk about it. And so that began a really long friendship uh, that I had with Will, which ended up leading to him giving his life to Jesus, which ended up leading to him joining us uh, on a Christian leadership training program for an entire summer, uh, which ended up leading him uh, ultimately to uh, walking with Christ and then moving back to China where I've completely lost touch of him because they're, they're unable to use Facebook or any type of social media over there. But, it, oh, I have a picture of him, too, by the way, uh, here. Um, I got to uh, tell my friend Billy, this is one of the things that God did. In Psalm 77, verse 10, it says, Then I thought, to this I will appear, the years when the Most High stretched out his right hand. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on your mighty deeds. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. And if we were to put together the collective memory of the people in this room, we could stay here forever remembering the things that God has done in our lives and in our families and in our communities. We have all seen him work. Even if uh, a couple of months ago, we, or whenever I spoke on this a month ago, uh, in our church community, um, I asked people to consider, what has God done in the last year in your life? And gave them a few moments to think about it, and then I made everyone say in one sentence something that God had done. And the things that people said were uh, really powerful. Because God has done a lot in our lives. And if we just take time to remember, we can uh, inspire one another and remind each other that God is real and he's moving and he's doing amazing things. And he's done such amazing things and, and our church has, has stories of what God has done and your church has stories of, of what God has done. And God is also doing great things right now. Not things from the past, but things that are happening now. We may or may not be in tune with it. We may or may not be able to sense it or experience it in the moment, but God is doing something right now. Something awakened uh, inside of me around our, the, this past year's spring break um, I've been ministry for 24 years. And of course, during that time in ministry, I've experienced all kinds of amazing ways that God has been working. And then I've also at times just felt like I've kind of gone through the motions and just, you know, just kind of done the things that I am supposed to do. And I think maybe I was probably in one of those seasons 
uh, prior to the spring break uh, trip, um, there were a group of us that were preparing to travel over to Amsterdam. And uh, we were going to spend the week uh, meeting refugees at a refugee center and just seeing what might happen if we walk into that place with God's presence. And uh, we had no plans. We had no idea of even how to do what we're doing. In fact, we kind of panicked before we went and we thought, we better, uh, we better learn how to do this. So we, so we watched some training videos on how to interact with people from Muslim backgrounds. And we, uh, we spent a lot of time praying and we went over to a friend's house who had had some experience in reaching out to refugees in the 80s. And, uh, and they invited us over and we spent time with them. And after that time, when we prayed together, we all had a sense that something uh, amazing might happen. And they just told stories. And it was stories of the ways that God is working all around the world through this refugee crisis to bring people to Jesus Christ. If any of us had walked into that time with low expectations, we walked out with a sense that God, God is real. And he's doing something in places like Syria and Iran and people from all sorts of countries that have been forced out and, and are coming to places like our country and Europe and, and other countries that are welcoming in people who are displaced I met with another missionary who works with refugees in Sicily, and we sat down and had coffee together, and at the end of our conversation, he said, Neil, um, I want to be honest with you. Your expectations for what you think God could do are too low, because God is doing amazing things right now in this world. I want us to pause and consider for just a moment. What if God is at work right now? Isaiah 43 and verse 18 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? In preparation for this trip that we were taking, I'd read a book called Dreams and Visions. And it's a dream which talks about how people from Muslim backgrounds sometimes experience Christ through dreams and revelations that they have. And it's stories, just one after another, of how people have connected with Jesus through some sort of vision that they've had. And, um, and often Jesus appears to them in their dreams. And then, and then God brings someone along their path to explain to them the gospel. And, and many of these people are just giving testimony to how God had done that in their lives. And um, the day I finished this book, which I was just completely captivated by, um, I was at the caffeinery just down the road here. If you ever wonder where all the pastors in Muncie are, they're there at the caffeinery. Um, uh, Wade, I've run into that guy so many times down there, but every other pastor here in town too. Um, I had just finished up a meeting with a guy and uh, I was sitting there and this guy walks in and we looked at each other and we had that, like, I recognize you. I'm not sure where I recognize you from, but, but we, we know each other. And then it all kind of came back to me. Um, and I remembered him because uh, we had had this really funny interaction with each other at Applebee's. He was a server there, and our staff team had gone over for lunch. And as we were walking in, we saw, well, <laughs> you know uh, Jim Sandberg because he came here, uh, I don't know, however many weeks ago, a month or so ago. And he was sitting there, and he was in a meeting with some other pastors. And uh, he didn't see us come in, so when we sat down, our server came up, and we said, hey, we want to we wanna ask you to do something. Would you go over to that table? This guy's a friend of ours. He's a pastor. And would you, would you take him a shot of whiskey and say, Pastor Sandberg, you know, here's your usual drink. And then just kind of set it down on the table and then you can just walk away. And um, he was like, okay, 
I'll do it. And uh, <laughs> so, so we were kind of watching, turned around, watching him do that. And, um, uh, and uh, when he set it down, I saw him say that to him. And then he just looks around everywhere like, who did that? And then he saw us sitting there. And he, of course, knew that we were the responsible parties for this. So you have to be really careful if you become any of our friends. <clears throat> well, anyway, this was the server that had come into the caffeinery. And uh, we started talking, and, and uh, I was prompted, and I'm sure it was because I had just finished this book, but I was prompted uh, to ask this guy, just out of the blue, um, and I'm sure it came out really awkward, uh, but I said something like, what's been happening spiritually in your life since I last saw you? And he said, can I sit down? I was like, yeah. And he said, I have to tell you about something that's happened, and I cannot make any sense of it. He told me um, about how he and his friends had been doing drugs together, and they um, uh, were video recording themselves while they were high, and, and, um, and he had passed out. And when he had passed out, he had a dream. And in this dream, Jesus appeared to him. And uh, he kind of told me the content of the dream and what, what Jesus said to him. And he said he woke up, apparently, because they were recording themselves. And he sat up and he told all his friends, it's okay, it's okay, God's with me. And then he passed out again. And they were all freaking out while this was going on. And he said he had the exact same dream again. And he said, I don't know what it means. And <laughs> I said, I don't know what it means either. But what if God is trying to reach you? And then I told him that I had just finished this book that was about uh, the refugees who were having dreams about Jesus. And he said, you are really freaking me out. Um, I said, could it be that this was more than just a coincidence that you walked in here today? And more than just a coincidence that we met each other at Applebee's? But maybe God is at work. And he said, I'm starting to wonder if maybe that's true. And we've been meeting um, off and on for the last couple months to have conversations about what it is that God is doing in his life. In John 12, in verse 32, it says, And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. And from the cross until now, God has been drawing people to himself. And he's doing that all around us. And it's happening whether or not we're paying attention to it. In John 5, 17, in his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. We are tempted to think that most of our lives are spent, lived in the, just the normal things of life. That hopefully God is good to us. Hopefully God will, will interject into our story when we need him to. But what if he is always at work? I think one of the, uh, of the story of Moses when he was in Midian, and um, this, is, this is where he spent ages about age 40 to about age 80. And he was tending his father-in-law's flocks. And one day at the sight of a burning bush, God speaks to him. And he tells him to take off his sandals because the place where you're standing is holy. Because this is the place where I am. And it wasn't something unusual about this place or this bush. It was about where God's place and his presence met together. One time, I think maybe when I was here a year ago, I told you about a trip that I had taken with a bunch of students out to Arizona on a backpacking trip. And we were spending time camping and exploring and hiking. And, and uh, we went out there for the purpose of Bible study and discipleship. And um, uh, I think maybe I had even told you that I've struggled a lot with anxiety issues in my own life and was kind of dealing with that right before this trip. And uh, I kind of was fearing getting out into the wilderness with all these people who didn't, most of them had never even been camping before. 
And, uh, and I thought, what happens if I freak out out there, you know, and these guys are with me and they're, they're young. And, and um, so we all kind of talked about whether I should even take this trip and we decided to. And before we were going camping, we went up to the Grand Canyon and I could just tell I'm, I am not doing very well. And, uh, and these guys, um, this is the most talkative group of guys I've ever been with in my entire life. And they just, they just did not stop talking. And uh, I think I was so irritated uh, with them that I said, all right, when we get back to the camp the next morning, we're going to spend the entire day by ourselves with the Lord. And uh, these guys were like, we've never done that before. And I was like, well, you're about to do it now. And uh, I said, spread out, go out into the woods. I want you to kind of be able to see the campsite from wherever you're at. And I want you, you could read the Bible, you could pray, you could seek God and um, and uh, it's unfortunate because uh, I feel like I was kind of doing it to punish them, but um, I needed <laughs> time by myself. And, uh, and I took off and I walked and, and God began just speaking to me and ministering to me and, and uh, was reading the scriptures. And, and I just felt and sensed God's presence with me. And I decided that I would... Uh, it was getting close toward the end of the day and I wanted to, I saw this ravine. I wanted to hike up through this ravine and, and uh, then I saw this cliff and I thought, I wonder if I can get up there to the top of this cliff. And so I kind of scrambled my way up and almost killed myself a couple times. Uh, but I ended up on the top of this place and I have a picture of it. Uh, looking down into this, it was just a beautiful place. But right when I got up there, I opened up this book that I had and started reading it. And the moment I started reading it, God met me there in a way that I'm not sure that he's ever met me before. And he reminded me that the journey that I've been on, which has been difficult at times, is a part of the story that he's writing. He reminded me that, that my identity is not in my struggle, but my identity is in being his child. And uh, man, I, I could go into all, I could tell, talk to you for hours about what happened up there. And um, I cried for probably an hour out loud. I mean, I was just out in the middle of nowhere by myself and I was just weeping, but tears of joy because I was remembering that God is actually with me. He hasn't deserted me or left me on my own or left me to deal with my own stuff by myself and just try to figure it out. But he is with me in the challenges and struggles in life that I'm facing. And that's what happens when God's presence meets us in a place. Those are unique experiences for us. But God's presence can meet us in any place. God is actually at work. And sometimes we can see it and believe it. Sometimes we wake up and we can see that God is doing something around us. That he's not off in the distance, uninterested or uninvolved in what's happening in our lives. And he's at work to bring about our good. That's what it says in Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. A friend gave me a, a list of verses that goes through these statements about who we are in Christ. And it's probably 50 statements. And uh, sometimes when I'm really struggling, I pull out that list of verses and, um, and I just read them and remember who God has made me and what he's doing in my life. And, and each, of these state, each of these verses is connected with a statement. And uh, there's a statement connected with this verse in Romans 8, 28. And every time I get to it, I think, oh, yeah, I forgot. And the statement is this. I am assured that all things work together for my good. God is doing something right now in the situation that we are all in. He is for our good. He's always at work, and we have to remember that. 
If you're dealing with something difficult, something that feels hard and stretching and painful, God is working all things together for your good. That doesn't mean he's causing bad things to happen to us. It means that he is taking whatever life throws at, whatever the enemy puts in our path, and he's using those things for our good to bring about his glory so that we remember that God is a good, good father who is with us, who loves us, and who is at work. We do not need to pray, God, would you please be with us, because he already is. We do not need to pray, God, would you show up, because he's already here. Wherever God's presence is, God is at work. Where, what it says in the scriptures, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am with them. So when we go to the store, when we go to the mall, when we go to work, when we go to our neighbor's house, when we go to the softball field, wherever we are, we open up space for the kingdom of God to be there at that place. God is at work in and through us. On Friday, a friend of mine and I were sitting outside this restaurant on a table and and, um, on a picnic table and and we were having this conversation. He was telling me something about his sister, something really terrible that happened. And, and uh, there was a guy standing next to us. And uh, I think he overheard our conversation. And he interrupted us. And he said, um, he said hey, I just want to tell you, um, you know, in this situation. You know, and he kind of gave us or gave my friends some advice. And um, he said, I'm really sorry. I don't ever do this. Um, so whatever, I'm just going to walk away. I was like, no, you know, what's your name? And, uh, he introduced himself to us and he started telling us about himself and he was a veteran. He could, he couldn't have been older than 30 years old. Um, he showed me this tattoo on his arm. He'd recently lost his son and he had a tattoo of his son's face that said RIP and then his son's name down his arm. And uh, he said, just six months ago, I lost my sister. And I held her for the last two months in her life while she died um, because she was addicted to meth. He struggled with alcoholism. He's battled violence. He's gotten into a lot of trouble. Um, He said he went through a couple year period where every night he would go out and look for the biggest, meanest person he could find and pick a fight with him. He said, I've been stabbed 13 times. I've been shot three times. And yet, I never died. He told me how he turned away from God because of all these things that have happened in his life. And he thought, how could God be a loving God when all of this horrible stuff happens to people? He told me that he had become a Norse pagan, the religion that the Vikings uh, followed, that he spends all of his time by himself. And every time he'd tell us something, he'd say, I can't believe I'm telling you this. Why am I telling you this? And we just listened. And uh, throughout the conversation, we got to share our story about how Christ reached us in the place where we were. And um, he said, At the end of the conversation, he said, I'm never going back to church. But he said, if I was going to church, I'd go to your church. And I said, well, why is that? He said, well, we've had this long conversation. I've told you all kinds of things. I've said mean things about even what you believe in. But I don't feel like you're being judgmental of me. And um, I tried to make a connection with him. And I... I, uh, told him about Wes, who's here in your community, and about one of my counselors who works over at the VA. And he said, you know, my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, she's been trying to get me to go over there. And um, right when we left, he said, I just want you to know I feel accepted by you guys. And um, I don't know what God's going to do in that guy's life. But God's at work, isn't he? 
You'd think with all these little messages, these things that happen, we would get it, that we'd receive it, that we would realize that he's doing something. And we would open our eyes and we would see that this place where we are, not just right now, but wherever we are, that this is hallowed ground because God's presence is with us. We did have a great experience when we went to Amsterdam. It was uh, probably one of the most amazing mission experiences I've ever had. Uh, we met a ton of people from a lot of different countries, and, and, uh, and these were all people from Muslim backgrounds. And they were all hungry to talk and even to pray and even to talk about Jesus. Um, we met with one guy. His name was Mustafa, and he, was, uh, he told us about this thing that happened to him when he was 16. He said, I had a dream about Jesus. And he was 25 years old now, and he said, it prompted me to just search stuff on the Internet about who Jesus really is. And we got to read the Bible with him, the scriptures of him. And then just last Saturday over at Brandon's house, we broke out a computer, connected through video, and we got to watch this. We got to watch him get baptized. God is at work. At the end of that trip, we invited all these people to this Airbnb that we had. And, uh, and just, this was going to be our last night here. Why don't you come over? And, and uh, there were a couple of missionaries that we were teamed up with. And we wanted to make sure that they got a chance to meet all these people that we had been meeting all week. And uh, in this next picture, this is a part of the group. There were probably like 30 people that showed up to this. And even now as we speak, many of these people are meeting weekly with the missionaries and they're sitting down to talk about what a journey toward understanding who Jesus really is looks like. God is at work all over the world, but God's at work here in Muncie in the most normal of ways. My friend and I, when we came back from Amsterdam, we decided, all right, let's, let's meet some people from Muslim backgrounds here in Muncie. And uh, so we started playing volleyball on Thursday nights with some Saudi students on campus. And uh, afterwards, um, it's usually pretty late, but afterwards he and I always <laughs> drive over to this gas station and get a, get a really big Coke, <laughs> um, which is not a very healthy thing to do, but we do it. And because we did it so many times, we got to know the guy that works at the gas station. Every time we'd go in, we'd say a little bit more to him and ask him a few more questions. And he started opening us up, opening up and telling us things about himself. And he basically said that he doesn't know anyone in Muncie besides Virgil, who's the other guy who works at the gas station, and his boss. And I was like, well, you know us. He goes, yeah, and you, you guys are some of my best friends here in Muncie, <laughs> which is funny because we only see him for 15 minutes on a Thursday night. And I said, well, maybe we should have dinner sometime. And he said, yeah, I'd like to do that. I've, I've never even had a meal outside of my little apartment that's up at the top of the gas station. And um, so we, we took him out to eat somewhere, and um, we told him that, we were in ministry with a church here in Muncie, and we told him all about ourselves, and, and, um, and he actually, he came. I mean, that's kind of creepy. I don't think I would go out to dinner with someone who invited us, um, someone, a patron of a gas station, but he did. And, uh, and here's a picture of us, I think, on that night, and we've gotten to hang out multiple times uh, with him. His, uh, his name's Lucky. But God is... God is working. I'd like for us today as we close here to stand and pray together. And um, of course, we know that God is always with us, but we also have to acknowledge that God is not just with us here, but he's with us in every place where we go. And the places where we go are holy places because his presence is here. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your love for this world. Even as we were, we were singing about this morning, the freedom that you, you uh, gave through the ideals of this country, 
Um, Lord, you're, you're so eagerly trying to bring people into the freedom of knowing and walking with you. So Lord, would you use us as conduits of your power and your presence right here in this place? Not just so that we could help other people to see you, but so that we ourselves could see that you are always at work, Lord, that you're always doing something. Lord, help us to discern your presence and your power. We pray that the places that we go, the people that we interact with, would be the places where our eyes are opened to see how much you love this world and the ways that you are at work in redeeming it. Father, lead us by your Spirit to the places that you want us to be in Jesus' name. Amen.